All right, welcome to the Stage Analysis Members Midweek video. It's Wednesday, the 25th of May. And I'm um, going to do a little bit of a, a special feature on tonight's video for the members later in the video, which is going to be a, a special focus on the IPO stocks that have um, building bases that came out in the, in the last year. So there's around 30 or so of those to go through as an alternative to the, the normal kind of watch list look as potentially the IPO market is a is a place where we could find some future leading stocks. So I wanted to, to do a little bit of a special feature and do a do a focus on on those stocks starting to starting to build near term bases, the majority of them potentially still well are still in stage four, for example. We've got Udemy as a good good quick example for you here. You can see the the daily view starting to build uh an initial base within still within the stage four decline here. So you can see that basing structure that's that's starting to develop here. It's it's testing the tops of the, the near term range at the moment and at the testing at the, the plus two ATR level here, starting to break out a little bit. It could obviously be developing a broader broader structure here. You can see on the weekly chart, which just coming out of a little little double bottom pattern at the moment. So a near term base within stage four at the moment. So potentially stage four B minus. There's quite a lot of the um the IPO stocks that, that look similar. They they had initial um IPO advanced failures immediately or pump and dump type patterns. If any of you have read the, the life cycle trade book. So there's a lot of those from any any that came out in the last year, and the vast majority are, are still in stage four or just starting to move into into stage one. So Obviously, the special feature I want to do tonight is going to be focusing on the um, IPO stocks that, that listed within the last 12 months that are, are starting to build bases. So we could obviously take it back further and, and go deeper into the IPO stocks. But a lot of those that listed earlier already had um, strong advances and then rolled over and have been coming off a lot. Take, for example, something the likes of Snow um that has obviously been completely devastated so i want to focus on some of the newer listings that have come out in the last 12 months and although they've had big stage four declines potentially they might have come off 50 percent themselves or so or even more in some cases there because they're younger it, it gives them a little bit more chance in terms of less overhead resistance and time-based resistance to work with as they start to move back into stage one and potentially start to move off into stage two again over time so so yeah, what's something i want to do a feature on tonight obviously you're going to start with the with the normal features of the the index charts we're going to look at the the industry um bell curve based on the bullish percent index for the ibd industry groups the, the 200 ibd industry groups so um so you can see we've got market prep charts IBD industry groups and then I want to get into some of these stocks and see what's what's going on with these IPO stocks making basis okay let's get going so tonight start tonight as always SP 500 attempting at the moment to form a base structure and we had the, the failed follow-through day up here which which came off and undercut the, the recent low so it's failed the, the um cancelling follow through day failed at that point it hasn't failed in the russell 2000 and potentially the ibd 50 i think they're still making made a higher low and still still consolidating since since then but in the the s p 500 and the nasdaq composite and the nasdaq 100 etc they all they all failed pretty quickly so we're now potentially back in an area where it could could form yet another follow through day i think it would be the fourth for the year so like i said i don't take too much obviously give them too much um credit it's it's just a a, a strong day after a potential swing low in the short term so but it could could get the the growth investors back involved again if we do get get that kind of move so tomorrow's a potential as it's it's now day four at the moment of a, of the move since the recent the most recent low we've been trying to form a, a near term base structure which if we drop down to the the 2 hour chart actually first I just wanted to highlight on these charts um I've put the percentage drop in each of the index charts today so we can we can compare to see how the relative performance 
of the different indexes. So at the moment, from the, the November high, we've had an over 20% move in the S&P 500. So as they, that's uh, the official bear market territory, although I think they did it on closing prices for that. Again, pretty meaningless in terms of just talking heads kind of stuff. They like to give arbitrary figures to things. As we know, we can. The market breadth has been been in stage four for for quite a while, well before we've got anywhere near twenty percent. So, the stage four breakdown levels and the and the market breadth give us give us the the clues that we're in stage four, um, in a bear market or not. So, that's that's how we play that. Two hour chart shows the you know, a, a stage one base forming. So I'm had a question mark on this a few days ago. So this is the we had a potential secondary selling climax down here. So we had an initial selling climax back at back in early May and an automatic rally into the Fed day. It then rolled over sharply and then had a secondary test which failed and we made a stage four continuation. So we're potentially attempting to form yet another stage one base here after the, the initial failed base. So another selling climax, automatic rally, then potential secondary test here, which is undercut. So potentially a secondary test is what they say is a, a sign of weakness. So at the moment, it's we've had three tests of this, this level here around the 397 level-ish. So potentially we need to we need to have a strong move back through this area and start to move back out with the base structure here into early stage two on this time frame and then start to hold up on this time frame, potentially start to start to move up and out again at that point, which could potentially give you a, a stage two entry point on the, the intraday chart here. Obviously, if that doesn't happen, we continue to roll over here. We could we could just make a, a further stage four continuation breakdown to new lows again, and be back off as we're still in a downtrend. So don't take for granted just because something is moving potentially into into stage one that is going to necessarily break out into stage two. That's a that's a misconception in the method. So when you get a get your your break your move down in stage four, you start to make your stage one base, and then potentially. You start to everyone expects to to suddenly start to run back off to the highs again. However, obviously, a lot of the time you can make a you can be starting to make a stage one base. You can think that you're gonna look like it's gonna break out, make an up thrust, then start to roll back over again and make a stage four continuation breakout and just continue on down to to new lows again. That that is quite a common pattern, really. So don't take anything for granted in terms of. Once you're in stage one, it doesn't mean that you're going to break out into stage two. It's just signs of potential basing and accumulation, which obviously you need to use the the price and volume to to read the clues for that. But even even then, the the near term action can suddenly change. You could have short term traders involved that then suddenly want to get out, and the, you, you never know what type of traders are trying to get in on a move. So they might just be trading the range. They might suddenly all exit at the top of the range and then it forms an up thrust and starts to roll over again. So stage two breakout level is like the stage four breakdown level. They are they are what we call a pivotal point as they can be both long and short entry point. So just something to keep in mind on that. Um, NASDAQ um, composite. Also similar to what we see in the SP 500, four day move at the moment off of the most recent low. You can see in this low on the bottom of that, you can see it undercut after its failed follow through day there. So we've got a new level to watch down here now in this kind of area. So just up. We got there. All right, 11.552 11, at the moment around that kind of area so potentially if we get a strong move tomorrow we get a big big bar like this through tomorrow a um, percent and a half or greater on some stronger volume than we saw today then potentially we could could have a new follow-through day on the nasdaq composite and similarly on the, the s p 500 if it makes a similar kind of move which should then push us back up towards that 21 day moving average although obviously on the int intraterm intraday terms here we're we would be looking to the, the top of the range here. If we did did start to move up into that, then obviously that would be near-term resistance again. 
before we get anywhere near this overhead resistance that we've obviously got to get up to if we do start to make some progress. We've still got 25% back to that 200-day moving average and a lot of overhead resistance. So any rebounds are going to potentially struggle. But someone did... They put a good analogy on on the Twitter feed today. I read which I I liked. It's um, that bear markets don't you don't. It's not like rolling a, a boulder down a hill. Basically, you, the bounces are um, are much stronger. So it's more like throwing a basketball down a mountain. So some of the the rebounds are gonna are gonna bounce back up, go sideways, come back down again. So it's it's very it's not just a, a sudden straight decline. Although obviously you do get sharp flushes, the, the the bounces can be equally violent. And I did see another post where someone put on the the nineteen twenty nine to thirty two. Um, bear market and i think that's what they were talking about in actually where they highlighted the the rebounds that they had multiple there was actually multiple bull markets within that decline they that rallied more than 20 percent and some even 30 40 percent plus within those declines even though it declined 80 90 percent whatever it was over over those three or four years so does it, just because you're in a, a bear market doesn't mean you can't have violent counter trend rallies within it. It's it's a volatile period and, and very different to, to the stage two period, which is much more calm. So basically be prepared for, for sharp snapback rallies at any point as it's a high risk environment, basically. So again here, NASDAQ, I've put the percentage move on this. So this has dropped off 32% since the November high there. So this is this is well into official bear market territory. Although, as I said before, we know it's been in a bear market for much longer than that from the market breadth readings in the NASDAQ. Russell 2000 made stage two break, um, stage four breakdown back in early January made a continuation move in late April. We're still consolidating below the what was that may the may the 12th low at the moment so this one made a follow through day and it hasn't failed per se as i think to fail it needs to undercut the low with for the official cancelling failure for that so this one's still holding on since it's it's bullish signal here Oh, with a, a shallower pullback so showing some near-term relative strength as we can see at the bottom of the chart here so since that move it's been moving back up again still needs still got a ways to go to get back up to the zero line there so we need to start to see some outperformance on a much stronger scale than we have seen at the moment so 1.8 percent move today so decent move on the day but still got multiple levels here we've got three or four days of action to get through which hasn't got through yet and then obviously near term high as well so again forming a, a shallow near term structure in here if we drop down to the intraday on it quickly you can see it's a it's a potential stage one base on the on the intraday time frame here so you've got your selling climax and automatic reaction and rally and secondary tests so you're in you're in phase b at the moment on the on the intraday chart here so you'd be looking for a strong move out into stage two potentially could take further basing before it does that but if you do get a strong move out you want to see a move out and then you want to see it hold above above that range before then moving up and out again further and the moving average is obviously turning back up again you want to see this kind of behavior but obviously as we know you could if you do get an up thrust at the at the top of the range and it starts to falter and come back in again then you could could see this kind of thing and start to move back off to the downside again so Again, don't take anything for granted. Just because you're in stage one potentially on the intraday doesn't mean you're going to go into stage two. And we're in a stage four decline and the week on the weekly, which is our major trend, which as we know, the fact the, the weekly trend is what we follow as our primary trend. So everything else needs to match up with that trend in terms of when you're when you're doing the multi-time frame analysis, you're looking if you're looking to get in on a pullback. But then obviously when we're in stage four, you want to be getting in on pullbacks on short, sharp rallies back up towards the moving averages that especially sharp rallies that are quick. So they're much more likely to then falter and fall back over again. So if you get a sudden move back up to the short term moving average and then it starts to roll back down again, then that's when on the intraday time frame, you'll then be looking for a move back down again as it starts to roll back over on the intraday time frame at that point 
if you did if you did that kind of move, you have the short shot rally up and then it starts to roll back over again and you start to move back down into a, a new stage four on the intraday and you get a new stage four breakdown at that point. So that kind of thing. So another one I wanted to highlight today we haven't looked at for a little while is the IBD 50 chart. So this has been devastated since the top in November. We had a, a double top pattern in November here. Let's see, it faltered, started to break down, change of, change of behavior, and then turned into the stage four decline underneath the moved underneath the 200 day moving average and started breaking down more convincingly, breaking multiple levels. And has been obviously in stage four ever since. We've been 45% since the, since the high there. So, as you know, with the Indexes uh, tend to be only a, a small proportion of what the individual stocks have done. So with a 45% decline in the index itself, then that tells you what's been happening in the individual stocks. Is that they can be one, one and a half to two times that, at least in some cases. So you could you could be seeing 60 to 80% moves in some of the individual stocks, which we know they have had um, recently. This is quite a doesn't have a huge amount of volume this this ETF, but you can see there was a, a short covering rally from the the May the twelfth low into the follow through day move, and but then shook out with another strong volume move lower, but didn't make much progress lower and has held up fairly well compared to the market. You can see there's been a, a small change of behaviour with a little bit of outperformance versus the S and P five hundred since the May twelfth low there. So potentially this one could follow through back through near term highs here and back through its 21 day moving average and start to start to make a rebound move back up towards resistance but a huge amount of overhead resistance in in this index and the individual stocks as is with the the IPO stocks um this is the IPO ETF so a good good proxy of what's been going on in the IPO market 62 percent decline since the high in in what was it late October there so this one has been absolutely devastated and individual IPO stocks have, have obviously come off even more than that. So again, much it, even worse than what we've seen in, in the growth stocks in the IPO market, which is why I wanted to, to talk about that today. So it's, a, it's an area where you could potentially find some future leading stocks, but the, the absolute devastation in it means that a lot of those are still in, in late stage four and are going to need a fair amount of time. But we could potentially see some short term rallies and some are already starting to, to turn around and form into into early stage one basis. So we'll have a look at those in a in a bit in the members content. You can see here on the weekly chart of the IPO. So we had the, the top of the stage, the original stage two top up there, started to fall over with the, the change of behavior move in here and then started to build a base structure out in here with some up thrusting type behavior. So we had an up thrust and then a test and then it rolled over. Big change of behavior significant bar here before faltering and falling down into stage four more convincingly around this area here so it's been in stage four since what's that late december time now potentially even with the breakdown in in november it broke multiple levels in here so potentially could have been this this move here we weren't moved into stage four although the 30 week moving average at that point wasn't turning down so but since then it's just it's come off huge with it's lost a further, what have we got down there? A further fifty-five percent since that move. So if you thought at this point it was it was too late to, to sell, then obviously now down here it's it's significantly worse. So whenever you see a move into stage four, it's if you don't if there's no rebound, then it's just it's just basically an exit point. You can't you can't hold a stock in a, into a major stage four decline as you you got no idea when it's going to end, and some never recover. So this is an index. It's obviously more likely to recover, but as we know from from prior stage stage two advances into stage three and stage four disasters like like we've seen in the IPO stocks over the last few years, a lot of them will not recover, and some will just fall apart completely and delist but we will see what goes on in that i will cover that in a little bit more later um 
So just wanted to, there was an earnings, a big one for earnings today. So with NVIDIA, so I just wanted to cover this as this is the intraday chart on this is a two hour. You can see compared to the market, similar kind of move since the November, the, um, since the May 12th low with a selling climax and automatic rally into a secondary test. And it's starting to form a stage one base structure on the intraday. Earnings was not well received today. However, it's in the after hours. You can see it sold off a fair bit. I think it was down 10% at one point in the after hours move. And it, but it had a strong move during the day. It actually moved up fairly strongly, 5% or so there. And then it came off over 10%, but it seems to have, have held back up again a bit now. So still off 7% since the close, but not really much change since yesterday's close. So And it's still within this stage one base structure. So we'll see how this develops tomorrow. If it forms a spring here and starts to move back up towards that the upper end of the scale here then potentially we could could see a new stage two breakout but if it falters and starts to starts to break down then potentially could make a stage four continuation breakdown there on the intraday which it's already in stage four on the the weekly time frame here as we can see for around four or five weeks now so it broke down back here so yeah right Let's move on to the market breadth charts next. I'm um, just going to cover a few of the short-term breadth charts today on the midweek video. Obviously, do the longer-term stuff at the weekend. So this is the NASDAQ percentage of stocks above their 20-day moving average. Um, this uses exponential moving average. So obviously a little bit quicker than the 20-day moving average, but that's that's what we've got with these. So it gives a, gives a good proxy once you start to, as I've said previously, when you start to move back out of the lower zone again and get through this key 30% level, then strongly start to move back up the scale again. That gives you a short-term buy signal. So potentially we start to see a strong move back through back through this area here ideally back up into the upper half there then that would give us a, a short-term buy signal on that but it's, it's close to a potential signal there so could could come as early as tomorrow and see nasdaq 100 similar kind of position mysc much stronger here at the moment back up to 45 percent at the moment so near-term pivot in here so we start to see a move through that then that would potentially put that back onto a bullish signal uh, Small caps, similar kind of thing. So you can see we've got near-term pivots. You can see strong move through here. And S&P 500, same kind of thing. So you need to see this start to get back through the, the mid-range here. It's come out of the lower zone, but still chopping around in the in the lower half of the, the chart. So it needs a little bit more work. The bullish percent index. So this is the one-hour chart that we use for short-term swing timing. So when it's below the, the 30 bar moving average hit, it's on a, a difficult environment slash negative status. And when it's above, it's on a, a more positive status. And obviously when it's chopping around between the two, we have a neutral status. So we're currently in a, in a neutral status. This is the NASDAQ at the top and then the MYC at the bottom. So you can see both are in, in a similar position here. We've got the top of the top of the range from the, the high on the 17th there. So if we potentially get a, a strong move through through both of these tomorrow, then that could move back to a, a bullish signal. However, if both fail and start to fall back below these the 30 bar moving average here and start to move lower, then we could we would move back to a more a negative signal again. So at the moment, a pivotal point in the neutral zone. So um, new high, new lows. Fifty has came off today. This is the MYSC new high, new lows. So it's the lowest this has been for the new lows since what well, back in April time here, um, late March. So the the new lows is uh, closed at sixty three today, and as you can see, we got up to a thousand a couple of weeks ago in early May when we made those those lows on the on the twelfth or so. What we got there? So we've got the dates. So ninth and the twelfth. Our two peak levels in there. So you can see we've come off dramatically since then with two lower peaks. 
So M, that's the NYC chart. NASDAQ, not quite as good. Still 307 new lows today versus 35 new highs. So we need to see that, as I've said before, we need to see that switch around and see the new lows come off and the new highs start to pick up again. Look at the cumulative line, still deep in stage four. So this is a longer term measure. And this, this is a bit more like a tanker turning around. So we need to start to see this start to turn around like we saw back in April, May 2020. And then that would give you a, a new bullish signal for a longer term signal. So see the others are much more short term. And the five day average still in the lower zone, still in a deep deep decline at the moment we need to start to see that this get back above that zero line and start to hold back above in the in the upper zone so at the moment that remains on the negative um effective volume so this is a, a another website you can go to which has some free content on it as well as obviously a lot of paid content too which you can see from these these various little key symbols here but it separates the large and the small player volume highlighted this over the last few weeks that there's been a, a change of behavior between what the large players are doing and what the small players are doing and that we won't see a, a move higher until both come back into alignment again so it seems like today we started to see or well, the last few days we started to see the small players come back more into line with what the large players are doing so if that the small players start to pick up again and stop selling as they've been selling quite significantly for the last few months whereas the large players stopped their selling at the start of may in the qqq here so you see the cumulative line potentially in stage one on the qqq russell 2000 a little bit weaker the small players are, are still more bullish than the large players on that one Whereas if we look at the, the S&P 500, we've now started to see a change of behavior with the large players accumulating more, whereas the small players are still negative at the moment. So we need to see the small players starting to come back into that and get back into alignment with the with what the large players are doing and then see a, a continuation of both of those higher for a strong move up. So again, potentially starting to move into stage one on the cumulative line for the S&P 500 for that. So good. Obviously, we could still flip the other way. There's no no guarantee that that's going to move into positive territory there. The large players could suddenly sell off again. But at the moment, they've they've been potentially accumulating there. Right, next up, let's move on to the IBD Industry Group's bell curve chart that I've, I've been posting on the, on the midweek videos for the last few weeks or so. Um, this, this fell off another... Um, what one point something percent today? It was almost two percent since the previous week. So it's down to we've now got 163 groups, which is 81.5 in the in the stage four zone, which is below the 40 percent level. So very, this is a very quick and dirty way of of doing stage analysis. You can do it without looking at any charts. Just basically, where what's the bullish percent value or what's the percentage of stocks above there? Um, various moving averages value so using the longer term chart so you can just basically look at those and if it's between the 0 and 40 percent range they're in stage four if it's between the 40 and 60 percent range this area here they're in either stage three or in stage one depending on which end of the scale they're they're moving from so and if they're at the upper end of the scale above 60 percent 60 to 100 percent then they're in stage two so at the moment we've only got 11 groups in stage two 5.5 percent with a mostly dominated by the oil groups up there a few utilities i think as well whereas we've got 26 groups in stage three or stage one so more in the neutral zone and we've got 163 in stage four so we compare that to last week you can see there was 154 groups in stage four last week 35 stage three or stage one and 11 in stage two so those 35 groups from stage three or stage one have drifted back to the left here into stage four so we're now down to 26 groups in in the middle zone here and we've got a vast majority of stocks in the lower zone so this is getting very heavily weighted on one side at the moment which as we know at some point that rubber band is going to snap back the other way which at the moment with the market attempting to base that could we could start to see some attempts in that so obviously everybody is is bearish at the moment on the on the various feeds, the analysts, the sentiment, 
there there are extreme levels that we haven't seen since the covid lows and the the 2018 stage four decline so that's obviously also very extended to the downside so with this also extended and the the market's at some key levels especially with the s&p 500 touching that 20 percent level as well that the the talking heads on TV like to talk about. So there's potential for a, a short, sharp snapback rally type move, which would obviously go against what everybody is thinking at the moment. But once we get, if we get that kind of thing, we'll start to see, see the groups move out of the lower zone in here and start to move back up the range again. So this is, this is very, an interesting chart. I like to, a good way of giving us a, a proxy of what's going on in the market at the moment. 